Hey you folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 as Italy. We are still on the pre-release version, and we are going to prep for our war against Ethiopia, which we're currently in right now. We've dealt with all the logistics of our country and our industry in the last episode, and now we're ready to consider some fighting. So fighting in Hearts of Iron um, is a very complicated thing. They've got a lot of crazy mechanics on how the units interact. If we take a look at one of these, you can see there's a bunch of different stats on these units and you know how they work is something that we are definitely going to poke at as much as possible in the future because I want to find out the best way to organize my armies and to take advantage of strengths and weaknesses but for now the thing we have to worry about with Ethiopia isn't so much we have superior technology and we have superior number of units so what we're going to do is we're going to create an army over here so, by selecting everyone and clicking the button down here, we can create an army. And this is, tends to be how you control units. You don't have to have units in an army. You can manually control them by just, say, selecting a dude and then right-clicking them to tell them to do somewhere. But being in an army has a lot of advantages. First of all, you can assign a commander to the army by clicking on the face over here. In Hearts of Iron 4, there are two ranks for commanders. You can be either a general or you can be a field marshal. Um, and you can promote a general to be a field marshal. The biggest difference between the two is that a general can only control 24 divisions and a field marshal can control any number of divisions. So why wouldn't you just promote everyone to be a field marshal? Well, first of all, when you promote someone to be field marshal, they lose one level of skill. Oops, that was an assignment here. They lose one level of skill. This is their skill over here. And if we sort, you can say Italy does not have a very good set of leaders. We have one person who's got level four skill, which gives us, for every level of skill, you get 5% boost to attack and defense. So even the level one dudes are worth assigning. That's that's still a pretty good boost. Um, and so promoting, if we promoted uh, Giovanni Messe over here, he would become skill three, which kind of sucks, but isn't the end of the world. He would also, you also lose all positive traits, or more accurately, you lose all the general only traits. A panzer leader is something only generals can have. Field marshals, cannot be panzer leaders. They also can't, you know, be desert foxes or whatever. You know, they can't have um, very sort of specialized skills. Generals tend to get skills that are specialized for particular types of um, ge like geography that you're going to be fighting in, leading particular types of units, or countering particular types of units. Whereas field marshals don't have a unit limit. They can still get good traits, like the field marshal here has a defensive doctrine, which gives you a greater maximum entrenchment. So if you're just sitting in a line, not doing anything, you can just really tank up a lot better. Um, so field marshals get slightly different traits, but you still lose the positive traits when you level up. The general uh, Sebastiano Visconti Prasca here really wouldn't hurt much to promote him because he's only level one, so he can't lose a skill, and he's got no positive traits, so there's nothing to lose there. You can create new generals by spending 25 political power as well. It's worth noting that the old guard trait is considered to be a negative trait, or at the very least, it's a shared trait. So if you promote someone who's got the old guard trait, they will not lose it. They still get the plus one max entrenchment not that that really matters that much although it's not bad but they also have 25 percent slower experience gain and your generals will gain skill by doing combat and they will gain these special traits by doing combat depending on exactly what they're doing so that is really really good to know so when we are assigning someone specifically for the battle in ethiopia we might want to consider who we want to invest in for the future um, and whether or not we want to keep an extra general. What I think I might do is actually I think I might promote Yugo here to be a field marshal. I don't know. It's tough to say. Because it would be nice to have maybe... I think it'd be nice to have two field marshals for not having a maximum capacity, in which case we're going to want to promote another field marshal right away so that they don't skill up to level two and then lose it. That would be stupid. Um... And then we might want to keep at least, you know, two or three generals around for more focused tasks, for example. It'd be quite nice if we get someone here fighting in the mountains to get some sort of mountain promotion. Or, again, there's no desert here, but it'd be nice to get someone with a desert promotion for future African combat. I, at this point of the game, I don't know what the best way to sort of min-max this to get it working. Um, I think I'm tempted to... I'm going to promote... You know what? I'm just going to sign a non-old guard general to lead the war effort down here. 
try to get him skilled up. This is someone I'm going to try to get to be another good general as opposed to a field marshal, and we'll deal with the rest after. But right away, he's going to get 5% bonus to uh, attack and defense. I could have signed uh, Giovanni over here, who's obviously going to be quite good. His panzer leader is not quite as relevant because we don't have any panzers here. Don't know how to, don't have any tanks. But his level 4 skill would be pretty huge. So this will be a little slower going, but we're going to try to get him a little bit of experience, and I like that. All right, next thing you can do once you do have an army is you can define a front line. So I'm going to define a front line here between my territory and Ethiopia. And if we were to unpause, these troops would automatically spread out along the front line over here in a good defensive formation. And will automatically reinforce areas that get weakened. Really, really nice to avoid some micromanagement. Not only that, but we can set an offensive line somewhere to try to attack. And you can draw this in a variety of ways. I can I could drag out something like this if I wanted. You can see the push. And then what would happen is these guys would start preparing for that attack. And every day they would get a, I believe a 5%, no, it's 2% boost to their preparation for the battle plan every day, up to a maximum of 50%. You can get doctrines and things that increase your max or increase the rate at which you prepare, which is really, really cool stuff. And anytime I want to, I could hit play on this battle plan and they would start marching forward. Ideally, I'd like to wait to get as much preparation bonus as possible. Although again, with Ethiopia, it's not necessarily critical because we have a huge numbers advantage and the technology advantage. Now, I'm actually gonna go and delete this battle plan. We don't need something quite as sophisticated here. What I really just need to do is beeline for Addis Ababa. As soon as we take the capital, Ethiopia will capitulate, or you know, maybe, maybe after a day, they will capitulate. And that's all we need to worry about. So we're gonna get that going. In the south, I'm going to go ahead and set up another army here so that I can set up another front line. And I'll, for the sake of argument, I will also set an offensive front line in Addis Ababa here so that we'll push from both directions. We don't have a ton of people here, plus two of them are green, and these are only colonial uh, divisions, so they're not quite as well equipped either. Mostly, I'm probably going to have them hold the line, but I think these guys, I'll have them hold the line, build up a preparation bonus, and then go. I'll probably rush it a little bit more up in the north, but we'll still give it a go. The green check mark thing means that the uh, commander does feel like he'd be able to handle it pretty well as is. Um, this, I mean, you could ignore this, even if you don't have a green check mark. Sometimes you'll have a dashed line. I suspect if I were to go and set an front line here, let's create a new one, set a front line here against France, and then say, uh, your offensive line will be to push up right up to this river. Hmm, they actually say green right now. That won't last very long, though, and then they'll, it'll turn to a yellow one or even a red one if the, the, the army thinks that it would be a bad idea to attack. You can ignore it if you want, um, but it is helpful. So right now they're feeling pretty confident as is, and I think it's probably fine to start pushing in from the north. Again, vastly superior numbers. These are mountains, which make it hard to attack, especially when they've got alpine forces, but we actually have some alpine forces ourselves, which are good at attacking into the mountains. So I'm going to tell, um, who is this? Ubaldo Sodu that he can execute his plan whenever he feels comfortable. So the battle plan starts to glow, excellent. They're just gonna try to push towards Addis Ababa, but in a sane way, they'll try to maintain the front line, they're not just gonna, you know, run in. Again, I could manually run the forces around if I wanted to as well, but that's gonna be just fine. In the south over here, I will give you a commander. I'll actually give you Giovanni over here, um, just so you've got it. I think that's probably fine. And then we don't need a, a commander here. Now, one thing is a little bit confusing. We've got troops in Africa, we've got troops in Italy itself. What I'm going to do for convenience is I'm going to create a new theater here. So as long as you've got any troops selected, this new theater button will be there. If you don't have any, it's not there. So with these troops selected, that's this army over here. I'm going to create a new theater and I'm going to call this the African Theater. Actually, I'm going to call this one the Ethiopian. Because I think we're going to have a sort of, uh, what would this be? I think it's Libya. Yeah, a Libyan theater separately. So I've just moved this army into a different theater. All this does is organize things for yourself. Helps you bookmark things. It has no gameplay uh, function whatsoever. Then we're going to grab this little foursome army. And I'm just going to right click over here to move it into the other theater. There you go. Easier to keep everything organized at this point. Excellent. Really like that. Oh, the one gameplay difference is you can affect reinforcement priorities by different theaters. So later on in the game, I will probably deprioritize the African reinforcement rates versus our European fronts, but we'll see exactly how that goes. Um, yeah, okay. So we got our battle plan. We've got people presumably moving. We've got some extra troops being assigned. Oh, we've got some planes without orders. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go... So if you click on any 
any airport, you open up the screen, you can see the, the these are the planes in Arecia, which are this airport right over here. In addition to that, um, if you click, say, the air button over here, you can see all of your air wings. Uh, what's going to be quite convenient now, here's a good question. Ethiopia, do I know if you have any airplanes whatsoever? Actually, zero. Now, this is an estimate based on our espionage. You can see I estimate they have somewhere between 8 to 16 divisions of infantry, right? And if I check myself, I know I have 39. So I have quite a bit more. Now, it's an estimate depending on our various espionage bonuses. As far as I know, they have no air force whatsoever. Okay, so I'm really not worried about um, bringing in more fighters here. Tell you what, I'll just take this wing as is. So these are all the people parked in Eretia. I'm just going to go and with all of them selected, I'm going to right click on East Africa over here, this air zone, which covers everywhere we're going to be fighting. So it's going to deploy all of my planes over here. We've got the fighters. Now they're complaining that they don't have range to literally reach everywhere. And that's true because their air base is here. The range of our fighters is actually quite limited um, because these are the interwar fighters, so they can't reach that far, but that's okay. Close air support's also complaining they can't reach everywhere, but they're gonna reach through most of the north over here, which is gonna let us push to Addis Ababa, which is fine. They do need a mission. Um, I'm gonna tell the fighters to go ahead and just do air superiority, which is actually not that helpful because they literally, so what this does is they fly around and try to shoot down enemy planes. With air superiority, they focus on fighters first and then bombers if there's nothing else. With interception, they focus on bombers first before they get around to fighting the fighters. Here, my fighters will literally have nothing to do, but hopefully they'll get a little bit of practice. So we're just gonna tell them air superiority. Then my tactical bombers and close air support have got a few other missions they can do. Um, the one we're gonna use is close air support. They will attack other ground units, which will help my ground units fight better. So we're gonna do that. I could also have the tactical bombers do strategic bombing where they blow up buildings, infrastructure, and industry, but Ethiopia is just gonna collapse and it this is not gonna help us in the war. In addition, when we take when we conquer Ethiopia, we don't want all their stuff to be blown up. Um, alternatively, we could also have the tactical bombers bomb ports, which if there's any parked fleets in a port, that will damage the ships, but it's not relevant here. Close air support can also do the port strike, but they can also do naval strikes, which is attacking ships at sea. But that's not what we're looking for. So that's going to be fine. Um, and what I could do is I could move some more planes over here. One of the things I might do, the easiest way to do it, I think, is I'm gonna say, listen, um, these tactical bombers, I want like up to 100 of them over here. There you go. It'd be nice if you could just type, but I don't think you can. And over here, same thing, the close air support, I would like there you go, 110. So I put that in, they turn yellow here to show me that I'm not at my max. They will reinforce from any planes that are in my reinforcement pool. Now, right now I don't have any of those. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and find some of my other planes somewhere else, like in Tripoli over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove these air wings. This is not destroy the plane or anything like that. It just, you know, releases the air wing puts all the airplanes into a reserve pool, which is then gonna use for reinforcements or I can redeploy them. So I'm actually gonna do this for all my air bases here. So I'm not gonna to touch Eretia, which has units, but Sicily, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And you can just click and then hit enter. It's very, very fast. Uh, Calabria, which has naval bombers. They're very good at blowing up ships. We're gonna get rid of you. So I don't need you right now, so it's gonna be fine. Sardinia, we're gonna do that. Latinum or Latium, gold press Latium. We're gonna do the same thing here, and PMO, same thing. We'll redeploy them later on. But now they go back in the reinforcement pool, and actually, my air wings in Eretia will go and reinforce very, very, very soon. One thing that's kind of crazy to me is by default, the, air, the airplanes are all set to no retreat. I like to give them normal operations, where they will only fly if they're at least 25% strength, otherwise they will repair. In fact, it might be an even better idea to go to low intensity, where they'll do it at um, 50%, but I'm going to take normal operations as a break-even, so that way they won't suicide quite as much. Okay, so we've got that. Our battle plans are there. We still, so we have a new warning here to let us know we do have some planes in reserves. That's okay. We're not going to care about that. We also get to note that we don't have any divisions in basic training right now, which is, you know, it's fine. It might be what I want. Maybe I want to just stockpile up some stuff, but it's really not what I want. So I am going to start training some standard infantry divisions. Divisione de Fanteria. I do not into Italian. I don't into most things, actually. So we're gonna train them. We'll be looking more at the division designer later on, but um, while this is a relatively weak sauce division, we will be building up later on. But for now, I'm actually, I'm just happy having a few more divisions. I'll go and train like three of these divisions simultaneously. And by default, I will tell them, 
just go and why don't you pop into Venice when you get done. So this is just where they will get deployed. I could manually deploy them in a few different ways. But yeah, we'll assign them a location. You can actually assign them to an actual um, front with this little icon too, which is quite handy. For now, I'm happy for them to just dump there. And I've actually got a bunch of troops sitting around that aren't even part of any army yet. But that's going to be fine. Actually, one really cool thing. It's so much easier to move troops around. I don't have any tanks in, in Ethiopia right now. So I'm going to grab these three tanks here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold control and click on this forward offensive. What's this going to do? Notice that right now my army here, this teal army, is 14 of 24. Now it's 17 of 24. These extra three tanks were added to this army, were added to a battle plan. They will automatically get on a transport ship, come over here, arrange themselves in the battle plan, and help push the front a little bit faster. I'm honestly not sure they'll get here in time to actually help in the war because this is going to go pretty fast but it's kind of cool all right at this point i think we can unpause we'll probably go up to at least speed two over here which is still not that fast and the battles will start any of these things that are green means we are winning if they turn yellow it's kind of a stalemate if they turn red we are losing a fight over here and we can click well, let's say right click oh to order move units to move here don't want to do that but if I click on it, it'll give me the attack breakdown. We can see my divisions, the enemy divisions. Um, we can see our actual combat stats over here, which are not terribly high right now. Mostly because, oh, it was nighttime for a second. Now it's not. And we've got a 60% penalty because of terrain, which is pretty rough. Um, now it's night again. And they do have some Alpine forces there as well. This one probably goes a little bit better because we have our own Alpine forces. Look at that, 44 attack strength attacking to the mountains. But we should win all these pretty handily. In the south, again, I'm going to let these guys get in position and build up their preparation, especially since these guys are green. Um, although, oh, they've already pulled back. You know what? Never mind. Even though it's a yellow line, I'm going to tell these guys to start moving forward here because they can start ninjing some territory that is currently open. And that sounds like a pretty good idea. You can see where they're moving if I select them. They're still trying to spread out along the front lines, but we'll also start to push forward. Sometimes it might be better to do things manually, Sometimes it's going to be perfectly fine to leave it automated, and, you know, automating it means a lot less babysitting, which is really beautiful. No reason I have to pay attention to the wars down here at this point. In fact, if we look around, yeah, right here, these are my tanks being transported over. And these unassigned dudes, I will go and I'm going to create a new army. So this is going to be in the Italian theater. Create a new army and give you a front line right over there against Yugoslavia. Uh, we've got some troops just kicking back over here. We will want some defense of our ports, but we don't need that right now. So I'm going to tell these guys to go to the Yugoslavian front just by holding control, clicking on the front line. They will go, they've assigned themselves to the pink army and go there. We'll have to name these armies um, later on as well, right? So actually, so you are going to be the Yugoslavian front. And this one here. And we might rename the theaters. We might split Italy into a couple of different theaters later on. It would not surprise me. This is going to be the French Front Army over there. You can uh, change the color of your armies as well. Um, so this uh, sort of, I don't know, yellowish, brownish, kind of like baby poop colored. <laughs> we, can, uh, we can change the color. I mean, hue, saturation, all these things. Uh, let's make you, uh, you know what? This is the French side. Let's make you completely desaturated white. So there we go. It's so a white flag, very much like what France themselves are going to show us once they surrender to the mighty Italian forces. All right, we're not going to mess with our ships yet. We do not need them in any way whatsoever. Let's take a look at what's happening down here. We've got our, flame, er, our flanes flying overhead. Um, and actually, if we look here, right now we have no support planes, but depending on where they're flying at any given time, at some times we will have some support over here. Planes are... Our planes have dealt damage to organization and some damage to strength, so they are helping out in the combat. Ooh, this combat's not going super well. Again, attacking into the mountains against an alpine troop, but we will go and flank them. It'll be a little slow going, attacking to the mountains, but that's okay. We've made some progression here, and someone will reach Addis Ababa and end the war, and still waiting for our tanks to come in. Now, tanks don't do actually very well in the mountains at all. So maybe they weren't the most useful things to move. But what the hell? We've, we've got to give them some practice. We've got to know how our tanks work. Oh yeah, we've got a couple of troops sitting around over here as well. Colonial division and a regular infantry division. Um, we will eventually put them on the front against the UK and France. I don't think I've got to move them or do anything with them at this time, though. 
so that's going to be okay. There we go, our tanks are about to arrive, and they'll join the skirmish somewhere. We are going to push forward just fine. Things over here are still happening. Moving in there, you're attacking there. If you attack from two fronts, you get um, you get a bigger maximum combat width, which means more people can attack at any given time. I don't know if there's an extra flanking bonus either. No, I don't think so. Man, the 20% commanded skill is quite nice. If we did have that in the north, we'd probably push through a lot faster, but this is fine. Actually, I'm just wondering if I just send someone directly into Addis Ababa, which might end it. But we'll let them continue to move up, you know, in this sort of cautious style. That's going to be fine. I, I, you know, I like that I don't have to micromanage. You can do better if you do, but rushing the war in Ethiopia doesn't really help us that much. All right. Looking good. So we've got that. We've got some new troops being trained. Um, we do have tanks being built. Like, we have, you know, some things being stored up and not used right now, but that's okay. Oh, the other thing we could check is confirm that our air wings are being indeed reinforced over here, and that is exactly what's happening. Uh, the size of your airbase does have a maximum capacity for airplanes. If you have too many, they will fight less effectively, but we're nowhere close to doing that right now. All right, that's good. There we go, we have some planes overhead. And whenever the planes are overhead, we get a bonus for air support in here. See that 3.10? But the planes will sort of come and go as they shift around the various battlefields over here, and that's okay. Uh, different people will use different tactics in combat, uh, depending on their skill and a variety of other things going on. Some doctrines will unlock different types of tactics. Some are better at counting other, countering other tactics than others, and some are just, you know, sort of plain better. The higher your leader skill, the more doctrines you unlock, and the higher your reconnaissance rating, the better you will be at picking tactics, especially tactics that counter one versus the other. Enemy air superiority over here. That's right, so just the fact that we have air superiority over them gives uh, their side um, a penalty. I don't see it in the stats here. Defender tactic damage. Oh, right here. Oh, it lowers their defense. Defense is the amount of uh, sort of free hits you can take before you start taking real damage. It's like, it's like I don't know, an armor or something like that, right? So the higher your defense... Most stats get used both on the attack and defense, but unlike European Universalis 4, there is one major difference between attacking and defending, and that's on the defense. Your defense stat means how much damage you can soak before you start taking real damage, and on the attack, your breakthrough stat is how much damage you can soak before you start taking real damage. So if you're attacking, you want units with high breakthrough. And I believe these tanks will have relatively high breakthrough numbers. 42 versus if you compare my infantry now oh, there we go now we can compare side by side 22 uh, the tanks have higher soft attack which is attacking at swish, squishy targets like infantry um, they also have higher hard attack which is attack against targets that are hard like tanks you can see my infantry unit over here is 0% hard or 100% soft versus my my tank unit here is 12% hard which doesn't seem that high and why is that well as it turns out this quote-unquote tank unit is actually four brigades of cavalry, two brigades of motorized infantry, and one brigade of light tank. It's a lot less tanky than you might imagine, and so we're going to want to change that later on. We have some free military factories, because uh, we've um, built or captured some or something like that. Um, so we're going to go and so you see we start to need some support equipment. We're going to need more in the future. I'm going to get at least five lines going there already. Um... Yeah, and that, that uses things up as is. And now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to max out the infantry equipment. We will need a lot. I mean, we have a shortage right now because we are training some troops. We are also having to reinforce um, our, our troops that are fighting here. And we have won! Our troops from the south, like that. They were just able to ninja in, grab the capital, and Ethiopia has surrendered even before we pushed in successfully through the, the north. We would push the north a little bit faster if we put the level 4 guy on there. But, you know, that was fine. Good practice. So, this is the peace treaty. If there was more people on our side here, um, the negotiation system would be a, a kind of interesting. Each nation can, gets a certain amount of war score from their contribution. Um, and you can make demands based on your war score. So, taking territory, making a puppet, or annexing the one state, the one and only state in Ethiopia, which is called Ethiopia, 
uh, would cost us 31. We may or may not have enough to do everything that we want. If we had, you know, more people in the war, we might have to take a little bit. You can pass whenever and you'll get extra points in the next round. But if you pass one round, then that gives everyone else a chance to take a slice of the pie. I love the mechanic. I think it's fantastic. I think it's going to be great in multiplayer. For us, we're just going to take all of Ethiopia. This will, um, if we don't take anything, it's going to drop the world tension by 5%. It's actually currently at zero, so it's meaningless. Uh, if we take all the states, it'll drop it by 2%. Again, it'll, it's still capped down at zero, so it doesn't really make a difference. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. We're going to take all of Ethiopia and that war, and then we are done. Negotiations. Peace conference is over. We annexed Ethiopia. We also sieged a bunch of equipment, which is kind of nice. And we can use that to equip our troops. However, I believe that it's mostly... I was going to say mostly base equipment. I'm not sure, actually. Oh, this is stored over here. Weekly production, yeah. So we captured some basic equipment. Um, we might have taken some artillery and different things like that. So we took some equipment over there. And we have won the war for Ethiopia just like that. And we are now at peace. We still have a bunch of troops over here. We really don't need very many. At some point later on, we'll want more troops over here to take out the UK. But in the short term, if we're more interested in taking uh, Yugoslavia... What I can do is just move all those selected troops and assign them to the Yugoslavian front over here. Which is what I'm going to do with a few exceptions. In here, um, can I sort by type? I don't know. But what I want to do is grab all my colonial divisions. Now, these colonial divisions, the, um, the downwards red line here means they are at a lower priority for reinforcements or, or upgrades. So they don't get the newest stuff. Also, these guys will always be um, relatively, um, relatively small divisions. I'll probably, I think they just have six brigades of, or six regiments of infantry each. And I think that's unlikely to ever change. Whereas my regular infantry divisions, I will add more and more, um, support battalions and things like that in the future. So they will grow more significant. The idea with the colonial ones, you keep them small because they actually have to cover a lot of territory but they don't have to be that strong in any particular place. So keep them small, more limited. They have a presence along the border somewhere, but aren't that tough. Anyway, I'm not going to use them for fighting in Europe here, where it's actually quite tight quarters. Having too many divisions would be a little bit annoying, and I'd rather stronger divisions that pack more of a punch. So I'm just going to take those colonial divisions. I'm going to, um, I'm going to create a new army. And my theater's got screwed up, so I'm just going to recreate my Ethiopian theater with that four-man army. Ethiopian theater. I suppose I should just call it Ethiopia or something like that in the future, but that's okay. Anyway, these guys here, I'm going to create a front, say, over on this side with the United Kingdom. It's a long front. We will probably need to send more troops here, but that's going to be good. Note that when the World War does start, we are going to want to snag the stuff in between, behind here from both the UK and France. But there we go. So we're going to have this sort of colonial front that's just going to go on that line, and that's okay. All right. And then the rest of the troops are going to go up to the Yugoslavian front, and I'm all right with that. All right, some of our ships are starting to come together. What we're going to do, before we do any wars up here, we are going to have to get our navy together. The easiest way to do it is if we hold control and box select, it'll only select naval ships. And I'm going to tell them all to go to Taranta. Sorry, I have a hard time saying that because I just want to say Toronto. Like, you know, Toronto, Canada. But it's Taranto? I don't know. Whatever. I apologize in advance for butchering all the names of all the things forever and ever and ever. Um, here's an interesting question. These are hills, but they, don't, uh, they have some mountains. But I'm going to take this Alpine unit, and actually I'm going to assign it to the French front instead. Because that's where we're going to be better off. And actually, um, especially if we're fighting a relatively passive war, this cavalry unit, I'm going to assign it to the Yugoslavian front instead. So we'll do a little bit of a swappy do. When you see the railroad there, they're doing strategic redeployment. They move a lot faster. I think it takes up more supply. Maybe, I'm not sure. It used to in Hoi 3. Um, and I think they arrive and they're not quite as organized, but they do move quickly. And the AI will, when you're doing these moves, will automatically use strategic redeployment if it's quite far. So that's good. Meanwhile, the rest of my troops are all getting on some transports and heading back to Italy. Victors! All right, it's February. The Spanish Civil War hasn't started. Oh, you know what I meant to do? I don't know if this has an impact on the Spanish Civil War, but what I want to do is I want to boost the popularity of the fascists in here. 
so that hopefully they have a bit more support from the population once the Civil War starts up. It does cost me some of my political power, which hurts because political power is really valuable and hard to come by, especially early on. But I'm going to give that a go. I don't know if it makes a big difference, but I've, I've played through a few starts as a few different nations, and I've seen um, Nationalist Spain lose more often than win, which is a little bit terrifying. And with that in mind, I'm going to want to send volunteers there. I have to figure out what I'm going to send them at some point. Probably just some tanks. You know what I should do? How much experience did I get? Okay, the Ethiopian War did not give me much experience. I got a little bit of army experience, and that's it. But it might be enough to make this tank division actually a little bit more tanky. Just give them a little bit more light tank. So it takes experience to shuffle this around. Can I, do I have a good support unit? Yes, I have engineering companies, which are great. Huge amount more defense, breakthrough, attack, um, more HP. I'm going to want engineering companies basically attached to everything. Now, I, won't, I actually don't have the points to add support artillery. Whether I would want to add support artillery here or not, yeah, probably. But for now, this is going to be okay. So they'll get an extra uh, second um, regiment of tanks over here, and they get a support company of engineers. So I'm going to save that design. And right away, if I were to look, if I'd looked at the before and after on our production here, um, the, the amount of support equipment required just shot up a bunch. We might have been filled their needs, but now all my current tank brigades need more support for that engineering company. And in addition to that, we need a few more light tanks that we may or may not have had before. But that's all right. So, um, and yeah, we're going to send over some volunteers later on. And actually, that's going to be based a little bit on how many divisions and stuff we have kicking around. Do I want to train more tank divisions? I mean, they're kind of crap divisions right now. I don't know. But what we are going to do is we're going to put a cut in here. Finish that war, which is great. We'll be going to a faster speed later on. Oh, do we have some ships down here too? We do. Let's get everything in one position so I can figure out what to do next. We may want to leave some ships in the Red Sea here to be able to patrol and or sink some convoys from the UK once the World War starts. But for now, I'm going to get everything in one place just so that I have an easier time sorting everything out. Are these guys... Oh, no, those are um, actual ground troops. All right, yeah, we'll put a cut in here. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I'll see you guys next time.